everyone, welcome to Musicality for Dancers. I am Joaquin Arteaga from Tromboranga Salsa Orchestra and today we are going to talk about the structure of a salsa song. Most of the salsa songs start with an intro, which develops a melody with the horn section. We're going to take the example of Palo Pala Campana from Tromboranga. The intro in Palo Pala Campana starts with a melody played by the horn section, the trombones. After the intro, we jump into the verse of a song where the singer starts telling you the story. Sometimes between the intro and the verse, we do a bridge. A bridge is a musical change between the intro and the verse or inside the verse or between the verse and the montuno that we use. We normally change the rhythm or change the harmony just to give it a bit of a flow and also breathe. So we introduce what is coming next. For example, in Palo Pala Campana, we play a rhythm called Orisa. You can hear it here. So the singer is starting to tell you the story about, you know, this man that has a bell and his wife is always hiding the bongo bell from him so he doesn't go out and play it in the parties. In Palo Pala Campana, if you check it out, we have a little bridge before the verse starts and then in the middle of the verse, we again play the same bridge to let it breathe. And then when the verse is finished, we also have a little bridge where, it's, where the chorus is going to start to play the montuno. The Montuno section is when the chorus is being repetitive and the sonero is doing improvisation between choruses. This is a very important part of the song because it's where the sonero can improvise and make the people, you know, amazed by his inspirations. This is very important because there is a difference between a singer and a sonero. A singer could sing and could repeat anything he learned, but a sonero it's always improvisating depending on the chorus and what is going around him. Another very important thing in the Montuno section is that the percussion, the bongo cero, drops the bongo and start playing the bongo bell, la campana de bongo. It makes it more spicy and also more dynamic, more strong. Also, the timbalero will play the timbale bell. So we have the bongo cero playing the bongo bell, the timbalero playing the timbale bell, and the conga player will be playing conga and tumbadora. Yeah. 
very important. We Latin people use sometimes the same word for different things. So Montuno has different meanings. Montuno could be the Montuno section, which we are watching now, but also could be a figure that plays the piano on the Montuno section. Okay, it's a figure, it's a repetitive figure also that plays in the piano. Also, we have the Son Montuno, which is a musical genre developed in Cuba. So it doesn't matter if it's mambo, timba, salsa, song, whatever. There is always a Montuno section on a song. Then, always in a salsa song, we have two options. From the Montuno, we either go to a mambo, which is a mambo section, not the mambo musical genre, which is a different thing, okay? We go into the mambo section, or we are going to a solo of an instrument of the orchestra. In Palo Pala Campana, we go to a mambo section. As you hear, the mambo section on Palo Pala Campana starts only with the piano and bass and then the trombones are starting to answer to them. This is a typical mambo section. It's very important for the dancers, the mambo section, because we always have accents, syncopations, uh, a lot of dynamic going on. So it's very important for the dancers to hear it so you can interpret it. After the mambo, we also have either two options. We go and do another Montuno, so it will be a second Montuno, or we go to a solo. In Palo Pala Campana from Tromboranga, we do a bongo bell solo, something that's not too common on a salsa song. So you can hear how the bell is doing a lot of off time, syncopations, and playing around with it. Then after the solo, again, we either jump to a mambo section or to a montuno. In the case of Palo Pala Campana, we go to a mambo section. But this mambo section has the point that we are doing chorus on top of the mambo. <laughs> Then after the second mambo, we jump to a second montuno. So we change the chorus and it's a, little, a bit of a different chorus on this side. So the same, there is a repetitive chorus and the sonero is improvising in the middle. Mundo 
this, the final part comes, or what we call the ending and the coda. Some endings and codas go back to the beginning of the song, to the melody that we did in the intro. But in Palo Pala Campana, we stop all the harmony and we only leave the percussion section playing and the chorus going all the time. So we make it a bit raw, like you're playing in the street. And that's it, the song is finished. So here you have a little resume of what is the structure of a salsa song. Okay, thank you all for watching. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, to my Instagram and to Facebook. I will have more videos next week for you and also all the countries where I'm doing the workshops. Thank you.